Welcome, traveler, to the site of the legendary Battle of Marathon. My name is Herodotus, and I am a traveler from Harikanassus. I retrace the cause of various events, such as wars and great calamities. I describe what I see and record what I'm told, all with the aim of providing a better understanding of why these things occur. Look for me to introduce you to many sites. It's truly incredible that such a small place would have such tremendous significance. But then again, even the tiniest pebble can send ripples through the water. Marathon was the location of one of the greatest battles in Greek history. It was here where Athenians made a stand against the might of an imposing Persian fleet. Your visit will take you through the causes of the conflict, the battle itself, and its far-reaching consequences. I will see you again once you're through. Farewell for now. In 490 BCE, 600 Persian triremes landed on a beach 35 kilometers north of Athens. Standing in their way were 11,000 hoplites led by the prestigious Athenian general Miltiades. The Persian forces outnumbered the Greeks approximately five to one, and yet the smaller force managed to push back their would-be conquerors. The Battle of Marathon was a major turning point in the Greco-Persian Wars, and the Athenians' victory would be celebrated for many years. The modern-day distance-running event is named a marathon in memory of a soldier from the battle who ran back to Athens to announce their victory, though whether this is real or legend is uncertain. The Persians wanted to invade Greece in part due to its rich silver mines. In 545 BCE, they came closer to this goal after their victory over Croesus, the king of Lydia. The victory forced some Greek populations in Asia Minor to surrender and gave the Persians a solid foothold to carry out a large-scale invasion. In 494 BCE, the city of Miletus revolted against its Persian rulers. They were aided by Athens and the nearby city of Eritrea, and even burned down an important Persian temple. The Persian king Darius was enraged by their sacrilege, and in 491 BCE, sent messengers to the Greek cities demanding their submission. Athens and Sparta killed the Persian messengers, goading Darius to invade. The Persians began their attacks, first capturing the city of Naxos and enslaving its inhabitants then taking the city of Eritrea. Filled with confidence from their string of victories, the Persians set their sights on Athens. The Greeks were surprised by the ferocity of the Persian attacks. Seeking aid against the upcoming invasion, Athens was forced to appeal to other cities for help. In a surprising move, they asked for aid from Sparta, known for having the strongest army in Greece. The Spartans agreed to the request, 
but they were unable to send reinforcements in time due to the religious feast of Apollo Carneos, which forbade them from leaving their city until the next full moon. The only extra help Athens managed to acquire was from the small Boeotian city of Plataea, which sent an additional 1,000 hoplites. This was the first time in Greek history that their entire civilization was under attack from an external invader. Despite sharing the same language and same religion, Greek city-states had often warred amongst themselves. The Persian invasion was the first time they realized the necessity of collective action to ensure their survival. The Persian fleet originally planned to land at the port of Phaleron. However, the exiled Athenian tyrant Hippias, who sided with the Persians, advised them to land at Marathon instead, where it would be easier to deploy cavalry. The Athenians were unaware of the Persian battle plans and left Marathon undefended. This allowed the Persians to quietly set up camp on the beach while Athens scrambled to mount a defense. The Persians' overwhelming numerical superiority forced the Athenians to get creative with their defensive strategy. The city sent 10,000 hoplites, along with the extra 1,000 Plataean reinforcements, to a hill located above the Persian encampment. Once in position, Athenians had to decide whether to wait for the Persians to attack or to strike them first. Athens' strategists believed the former option was better but the general Miltiades believed a first strike was more advantageous, as the Persians had their backs to the sea. In the end, Miltiades' opinion prevailed, and the Greeks made their move. According to Herodotus, the Greek forces charged at the Persians without archers or cavalry. The Persians were unprepared for what they saw as an act of madness. While they were able to hold the Greeks back at first, they were eventually pushed back to their ships and forced to retreat. The Persians suffered heavy losses during the battle, with approximately 6,400 casualties. The Athenians, on the other hand, only lost 192 soldiers.
the victory at Marathon was considered miraculous. The Greeks attributed this miracle to the appearance of legendary heroes who they allegedly saw return from the dead to fight at their side in defense of the city. For example, several Athenians swore they saw the mythical King Theseus take up arms at Marathon, a scene which would later be depicted in Athens' Agora. Similarly, some hoplites attested that Heracles appeared at Marathon, clad in his lion skin and wielding a club. The supposed appearance of these heroes helped elevate the Battle of Marathon to a legendary status among the Greek people. After the Persians fled Marathon, they tried to invade Athens by way of the Bay of Phaleron. However, this gave the Athenians time to return to their city and mount a proper defense. Fearing further losses, the admiral of the Persian fleet called off their attack, and the Persians returned to their empire. Darius was furious at the campaign's failure, and decided to seek vengeance in a retaliatory expedition from both land and sea. Meanwhile, Sparta begrudgingly congratulated Athens on their victory. The victory at Marathon marked the beginning of a new era for Athens. According to Herodotus, Athens' success at pushing back the Persians ranked them first in the ongoing competition between the Greek city-states. The Athenians immortalized their prestige by erecting monuments in both their own city and in Delphi. The Battle of Marathon was also perceived as a blow against tyranny. Tyranny went from being perceived as a simple flaw in authoritarian excess to major treason against the homeland, a sin that rulers would take great pains to avoid being accused of. This helped consolidate the institution of democracy for the next two centuries. I hope you enjoyed this look into the famous Battle of Marathon. It was not only a major turning point in the history of Athens, but also for all of Greece. Its repercussions would be felt for many years to come. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Of course. Let's start with a simple question. 
Which Athenian general led the Greek forces at Marathon? Leonidas was a Spartan warrior king and would not have led an army of Athenian soldiers. Try again. Brasidas was a Spartan general, and while Athens asked Sparta for aid, they were unable to send reinforcements in time for the battle. But please, try another answer. Alcibiades was Athenian, yes, but he was born a few decades too late to fight in the battle. Keep trying. Correct. Miltiades led the forces at Marathon, and it was his strategy that helped the Greeks push the Persians back. Time for another question. Which Greek city revolted against the Persians in 494 BCE? No, I'm afraid Naxos was taken by the Persian fleet on their way to Athens. Try another answer. Marathon was the site of the battle between the Greeks and the Persians, but it did not revolt. Try again. Persepolis was actually the ceremonial capital of the Persian Empire, so I doubt it had much reason to revolt. Keep trying, though. Correct. Miletos revolted against Persian rule with support from both Athens and Eretria. One more question. Which other Greek city aided Athens at Marathon? Unfortunately, Eretria was taken by the Persians and thus unable to help. Keep trying. Sparta did accept Athens' plea for aid, but they were unable to send help due to the religious feast of Apollo Carnios. Try another answer. I'm afraid Naxos was pillaged by the Persians on their way to attack Athens. Try again. Yes, Plataea sent 1,000 Obides to aid the Athenian forces. Well done, traveler. You have learned much. Farewell, traveler. I hope to see you again soon.